Welcome back, and I'm guessing that some of you are wondering, what is a spa? Well, on a sailboat, the mast is known as the spa, and its job is to provide uh, strength to hold the sails up. And on an aircraft, it, the job is to provide uh, you know, structural rigidity to the wing. So here you can see I've highlighted the spa in the Raptor. It's the one in blue there, and it's effectively, it's sort of like an I-beam, but really it's just a C-channel. Here you can see I've isolated the part in order for you to be able to see it better. And basically this part is made up of multiple layers of carbon fiber and also the backing plate um, has some core included to add extra strength. And as you may recall, the first thing to do uh, for setting up for a new plug is to create the flanges on that part. And here you can see I've done that. So the next thing would be to create the tool paths for that so we can mill the foam plug. But you'll see more on that shortly. So here's another little side project, and this one was uh, cutting out a template out of cardboard um, of the lower half of the door or lower section of the door so we could lay that up, that up against the core in the fuselage in order to be able to trim it around where the doors are. And it, this is probably the easiest way for us to do it. It's not as accurate as, as being able to cut it using the machine. But anyway, there you can see we've used the template and marked out where the door is going to be there and um, we can trim that core so and it's accurate enough for what we need because the core just has to be set back a little bit so the outer and inner layers of the carbon fiber can come together so you remember from last time we were milling the new uh, rear or uh, aft bulkhead and so you saw that that got glassed and sprayed with putty so here it is under the mill and just starting out the first cut here just doing a face cut on that back face with the uh, three quarter inch short uh, flat mill that I have. So it was quite a, a little bit of work to get done on that, but nothing complicated. And here you can see it's doing the flange and uh, it came out actually really well. So the machine is so well dialed in now, the finish is um, coming up so nice. That it just means that we don't have to do so much hand sanding to finish off and actually learn a little trick this time when we're um, swarfing the edges around there of where the, the flange meets the, the actual part, decided to use a ball mill and you'll see that shortly. And, and that actually just creates a nice little round transition instead of a, a 90 degree transition, which means uh, later on it's easier for us with painting and sanding and all that stuff. We don't have to actually put a transition around a transition back in there because it's already there. So there's, uh, there's some uh, putty being sprayed in your face. <laughs> Anyway, so there's the uh, round ball mill um, running the swarf cut there and I actually did it in sort of four steps down um, so it's not sort of taxing a bit too much because it's cutting quite a bit off there and we just don't want to put uh, put it in too deep uh, initially otherwise it might chatter and then it, um, it won't do a clean cut. So overall I'm pretty happy that we're able to get this one milled in. Really it's only, it was only about two days of work altogether from one day on the foam and then one, not even a day, it was a half a day um, milling the putty on this one. And there you can see the finish and there's there's the radius I was talking about there. So you see it's not like a 90 degree at that corner, it's actually a radius uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So that came out good and, and this is the last little pass here, um, just cutting off a little bit of extra putty that was left over from those two faces that sort of meet um, on an angle and the only way to finish those off is to basically do a, a swarf cut there where you do a swarf cut on either face and they the edges meet up perfectly and so then you get a perfect transition uh, other than that if you don't do it that way one cut ends up eating into the other face a little bit so while all that's going on the guys have been pretty busy so here's uh, zach uh, wet sanding on the uh the roof plug or yeah the roof plug so this is uh, with the 220 and then ultimately it'd be 320 and 400, but there's more to go on that. So you're going to see that for the next uh, update or so. So that's a little bit further along there and getting it uh, looking all nice. And there it is from the other side. Bit bit messy with all the residual on it, but it just gets washed down and sanded some more. So here's the overhead console. Also getting the same um, wet sanding treatment. That's about halfway through on the first... Um, first go around with a 220 and here's the uh, uh, plug or molds that we did the other day for the floor braces you can see those are all finished there we're gonna be popping those soon just letting them um, sort of harden up even more 
So back onto the uh, spa, and here is the um, platform set up for that. So the guys did a pretty record job on creating the platform for that. So that's two by four steel, uh, all welded up, and the um, plywood added to that, foam added to that in um, way less than a day. So that was really good to get that done. So this was on the Thursday evening, actually set it up to start just doing a rough cut in the middle there. That was the only area that needed a rough cut. And so here you can see using the um, long uh, three quarter inch uh, flat end mill to run that rough cut in the middle there. And this thing is huge, it's 16 feet long. Uh, it's almost three feet wide and it stands um, 36 inches tall. So it's, it's the biggest thing that, in terms of length, it's the biggest one we've had to cut so far. So anyway, I come in on uh, Friday morning yesterday to see how that had progressed and I see this on the end of the end mill. And basically what had happened, and from what I could tell, was there was a piece of um, fiberglass material laying on the floor and it got stuck to the foam. And when the machine was running, it, it caught it uh, on the end mill and started thrashing it around. Of course, it got hot because it was so rough and it um, you know melted some of the foam and, and basically I had to replace a sort of section of the foam and but not a big deal more on that shortly so in the meantime here's Zach um, prepping the keel for next week so five coats of wax on that and then uh, the wax profile got put on that as well uh, so we'll probably be pulling the mold off of that next week um, if not we'll be laying up the fuselage one of the two or maybe even both Here's Mark, and he's moved up to um, the 320 grade on the uh, wet uh, sanding here on the roof uh, mold, so that's coming along. Okay, so now we're finally getting some real milling done on the um, plug for the main spar after having to replace that center section that got all messed up. So here you can see just with the long end mill, uh, actually no, this is with the ball end mill uh, doing the uh, swarf cut on the side there. And so that's the first half of it done. It came out actually really well. And then I had to slide it down the table because our table can only mill about 11 to 12 feet. Of course, this thing's 16 feet long. So I slide it down the table and then readjust where my zero is and then start running paths for the other side. And so again, there's the finished side. And here it is just running um, the other side. That's a different angle there. Actually, if you look closely there, you can see the sort of negative draft on that side of that spar there. And that sort of follows the curvature of the wing so it may look simple but there's actually specific curves in there that are very critical to match up with the surface of the wing and finally here it is at seven o'clock last night friday i stayed late to finish this and it's basically done it just needs to be sort of dusted off there i just wanted to get out of there it's getting late so that's the main spar um done and we'll be glassing that hopefully next week got a lot of stuff on our plate but glassing that and getting it into putty and i've got a couple more pictures from doug so here's those flanges that he was milling um, for the exhaust and I'm guessing from what he's sending me here that, that um, those are the two pieces there that are basically going to make a Y pipe that feeds into the turbo and so here you can see he's bolted them up there just to see how they fit and so he'll be uh, creating that Y pipe next I'm guessing and we'll hopefully see another update for him soon. And on a side note, I've been working uh, in conjunction with our structural engineer, Mark, on figuring out the firewall and engine mount and all that sort of stuff. So he's sort of working on that and I'm helping him along. So here you can see I'm highlighting where the firewall is going to be. And that will actually protect um, the baggage compartment uh, from the engine compartment. And if I hide the engine block there, you can see the 2D image of the engine. And here you can see I'm highlighting the BRS parachute box. So anybody who chooses that, that's where you can see it's going to live. It still leaves quite a lot of room for uh, baggage, as you can see from this side. And if I flip around to the other side, you can see there's plenty of room there to put baggage in. And those frames will actually be smaller, probably. And lastly, here's the engine mount that Mark's been working on. And there you can see the back part that encapsulates the belt drive system. And then you have a lower brace and an upper brace and it'll all be made out of steel for fire protection and there you can see the mock-up of the engine in the middle there and you can also catch a glimpse of the lower end of the gear leg that mark finished uh, recently as well and that's the update thanks for watching